Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to be flying fearless today. Yeah, that's what we're doing here with our next guest. And uh, Lindsay joining us uh, live here as a resilience and career coach from Fly Fearless Unlimited, hailing from Montgomery, Alabama. Excited to have you back. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be back. Well, excited to have you here and to talk more about your company, the work you're doing as a coach, also uh, as a realtor as well. I mean, there's a lot that you do to help build someone's confidence and to help with their communication skills to kind of get where they want. Uh, So first and foremost, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Yeah, so uh, I originally started Fly Fearless because of a medallion that my sister engraved with the words Fly Fearless, the St. Michael's medallion that stayed with me throughout my deployment. And I thought I had lost it. It broke off my dog tags and miraculously it showed back up. Uh, So it just kind of the message in the medallion resonated with me so much uh, because of my role as an Army Chinook flight engineer, literally having to fly fearless. Uh, uh, So not only in that role, but in my life as well. So I became really, really passionate about helping other women being able to fly fearless in their lives. So that's kind of the journey of uh, where it all started in my brain and bringing it to a reality. Beautiful. And how can we contact you? Uh, so the website is flyfearlessunlimited.com and you can always email at info at flyfearlessunlimited.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. And tell us, uh, fill us in about your week. What have you been up to and doing? I know you had a very busy week the week before. Uh, yeah, so I actually... Um, I actually have been, if any of have, any of you have been po- uh, following me on TikTok, I have been posting some additional videos. I actually opened up some space on my calendar for uh, veterans specifically to reach out to me if Aww. they wanted to talk. Because um, my, my father passed away 20 years ago now from suicide. So I've been very active in veteran suicide prevention for... Um, gosh, over 15 years now. And um, I just really felt the need to have a space in my calendar for veterans to to reach out to me if they needed someone to talk to. So it's been really, really positive. Um, some veterans have been reaching out, just needing that time and space to um, just talk about things that they're going through. So that's really been on my heart uh, lately, opening opening up that space for them. And when you open the space for them, um, are they able to come to you? Do they, is there a charge? Is it like you're, you're honoring those? Or how does that work with the veterans? Is there a discount for them? Oh, right right now, it's completely free of charge. I opened up my calendar spe- specifically for them uh, just to see if, if there was a need, if veterans wanted to reach out and wanted a place to talk and having, um, you know, being an Army combat veteran myself, having somebody they could, you know, potentially relate to who's been through, um, you know, maybe some similar experiences, either downrange or stateside and having that dual role, which is challenging in and of itself, being civilian and military is is very very difficult um we tend to have um you know uh different different stressors that go along with that so i just opened it up for a limited time right now completely for free if they want to reach out they can schedule it's the same scheduling link discovery discovery call it's the same same kind of platform uh, i think i now have a, a a button right on the homepage, get on my calendar. You can click right there and immediately schedule some time on my calendar and, and speak with me and see if, you know, it kind of makes sense to just have somebody to talk to and connect with. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. And what did you want to discuss today for your listeners about the coaching process, what you're doing uh, via one-on-ones or with the real estate market as well? Because you also dabble in that too, right? I do. I do. Lesser capacity right now. That's a little little slow moving, which I'm totally fine with. Uh, it takes a while to uh, vet properties, go through underwriting and find something that makes sense. Um, but yeah, for the coaching, I usually have somebody, uh, either they attend a free workshop, which I'm working on planning the next one, um, uh, they reach out and have a free discovery call, see if it makes sense. I do have a six-week coaching package, Fly Fearless Coach 
coaching. And I just recently put that on a limited time discount for $9.97 for the six weeks. So that's on a a nice little discount. And then I do have the one-on-one three-month package that you can work with directly with me um, if that makes sense for you as well. So that's open too. Got it. And any leads this week? Have you been helping someone with any, you know, any anything in particular that you want to share? Uh, yeah. So just just reaching out um, and connecting with a variety of women, uh, which has been super super fulfilling. Just kind of giving them the time and space and finding out where they're at and seeing what their next steps are. And I just thoroughly enjoy that. Just working with women, seeing them come to the realization on their own, um, knowing that they have the internal strength to take the next steps. It's just, it's just really, really fulfilling. Yeah, I know. And this time of year, I feel like we're getting to a tricky season here, um, right? It's, uh, you know, the winter months. And I think people kind of, uh, well, spend more in gifts and stuff, but they also struggle mental health wise and could use, uh, you know, is there a, a, you know, a better time to come different seasons? Do you notice anything about clients that come now compared to over the summer months or... You know, that is interesting because we do tend to in in these last months of the year, we we tend to get a lot of seasonality of our emotions, of our feelings. And uh, there are a lot of stressors with the holidays coming up, with family, with kids, with all of those things going on. It, it does tend to pull us in a lot of different directions and we tend to not focus on ourselves as much. And I think it's really, really important to take that time and the space to honor the things that you personally need. And also on the flip side, in the summer, you do get all that warmth and sunshine, which is filling you and making you feel happy. But now the kids are out of school and, you know, what are you going to do with the kids or you're running around, you have different type of stressors. So I think there's an ebb and a flow depending on the time of year. And there's different challenges challenges that come up, but definitely making sure that you take the time and space to fulfill your own needs. Because if you're not filling your own cup, how can you fill up other people's cups? So we're talking (laughs) self-care. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Something that we all struggle, uh, lack. uh, Yeah, especially me. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I do. (laughs) Guilty. But most parents do, all right? Guilty. And you're not supposed to, but it's hard. You know, it's just, Mm -hmm. it is. I'm not going to complain too much. But um, yeah, the little things that you have to fill up that cup, as you say, which I forget to do. Looking at well, as else, women, but, uh, we, we tend to be people pleasers, right? Mm-hmm. So we always like we're last on our own list, got to take care of everybody else, make sure they're all set. And then we're almost like a second, second thought or a third thought or even fourth thought. And we really need to make sure we're we're near the top because if we're not taking care of ourselves, how can we possibly be taking care of anybody else? Wow, it's so true. <laughs> and my secret tip is, honestly, the only thing I could do to help me with self-care, it's about time. Time management. I have to wake up early. There's no other way to get time, right? There's only 24 hours in a day. And from people who make excuses, I don't have time, I don't have time. You do. You just have to get up earlier. That's my... That's my um, um, take on it. <laughs> what would you say to someone who says the same thing, worries about time management? Well, I don't have the time. What do you tell them? Oh, that's so interesting because it's right. We all have the same 24 hours to work with. And I am a big uh, believer in, uh, we, we do have time. It's just, we make time for the things that are important to us. So if you're not making time for something, it's really not that important to you. And then you have to kind of ask yourself, well, why isn't it that important to you? Yeah. Like if somebody really wants to work out, but they're like, I don't have time to, I don't have time to. It's like, well, that's that's not the case. You have time. You would have to make time, but it would have to be a priority for you in order to make that time. So let's back up and find out why isn't it a priority? Because yeah. you're clearly filling your time and your space with other things. Excuse me. Yeah, for sure. Well, how do you manage your time? What is your schedule like? Oh my gosh. I I really, I'd use a lot of time blocking and I use my calendar. Like if it doesn't go on my calendar, it doesn't happen. So either it's a reminder or a time block. Uh, there's different, there's different colors. Like I have different, like all my military stuff is in green. Yeah. All my personal stuff is in gray. All my business stuff is in yellow. Wait, wait, wait. How do you do that? Is it on like a, 
what type of program? my Google Calendar. You can just change the color of the meetings, and you can add like different categories and tags. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, what I, I text myself or I put in the notes section, and then I never, I never look at it again. Maybe I should do that because you could set <laughs> reminders and times on it, right? Yeah. So, like, I have a reminder right now, uh, three times a day for fifteen minutes. I make sure that I sit and yep. I have like my my little my little visualization, quiet time. And when that reminder goes off, it's like, okay, so now I'm going to go sit in my chair and I'm going to go think and you know do the things that I need to do to get my mind in in the right time and space that I need it to be in. But it's a it's a reminder on my calendar and. It goes off three times a day and then three times a day, I make sure that I do it. I put my workout time on my calendar and I make sure that that's in there and I schedule it right there and I block it off in my calendar. I don't have to worry about, I even put travel times on my calendar so that way I don't end up with double booking meetings or things like that. So it's my time is is very, very regimented, but it's obviously still flexible, right? But I make sure that I'm making the time and the space for the things that are important to me. <laughs> well, <coughs> I apologize. I'm coughing right now, so I'm going to ask you to talk again while I take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite all right. I, I mean, I, I hope the little little frog in your I'm coming over away. a cold. No, I'm coming over a little cold. My kids had it the other day, so my voice. Oh, <clears> no. <throat> kids and germs, they pass it around everywhere. <laughs> oh, it's very itchy. All right. Sorry. Now, what were we talking about? I forgot because I got all flustered and now I'm sweating. Uh-oh. We're talking I about got- calendars and time blocking and, and making sure different colors on your calendar and stuff. And I'm sure you're helping people with that, too. You taught me something new. Google Calendar. It's funny. Let me grab my phone. I don't even know if I have... Google Calendar. How do I even know if I have it? Like, I just have like, no, no. Like, I ha- I have this calendar, but like, this is like, oh, it's it's gonna go like that. But like, my regular yeah. calendar's in my phone. That's not Google Calendar. No. Are you um? Are are you? Do you have an iPhone? Yes. Are you using like the 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 iCal the Apple Apple Calendar? Yeah. Probably the default. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So that's not it. Yeah, that's not. I I put everything because I use Google Workspace for work, so I use the Google Calendar oh. and I just use it. Yeah, so I got rid of. I think I got rid of that app, and I just made my my Google Calendar the default, and everything just goes on goes on there now. So now it's on my phone, and the reminders go off, but it's also on my my computer, and and the reminders go off. And I mean, I'm sure you can change it on on iCal too. Yeah, there I must know. be there must be a way. Um, but yeah, there's, cause I'm pretty sure I can do it like on my outlook calendar that I don't use at all either, but yeah, because I'm, I don't know. I'm logged in for Google for my kids stuff, Google classroom, and, and I don't have the calendar part, I guess. It's funny because sometimes when I make a doctor appointment, it says add to Google calendar or add to, and I'm like, I never even knew how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I add everything on my calendar, everything. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Well, I got to figure that part out. And, um, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges of coaching people, would you say? Oh, gosh, I think a big challenge is we get in our own way. And I'm I'm currently dealing with um, something that I, I think if people opened up their their mind to the fact that I'm a firm believer in great attitude, great results, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you have a crappy attitude, your results are probably going to be crappy. And I think if more people realize that, um, they would be happier and healthier and uh, their results would be better. So I think opening up that awareness for people is is difficult because he was like, no, no, like so and so just hates me because that they just hate everybody, and it's like, well, I mean, they might, but yeah. you don't have to. You don't have to let the way that they act upset you because you can protect yourself and True. be secure and happy with your thoughts and yourself. And who cares if they're having a bad day? You yeah. can still have a great day. Yeah. I, I like this. It's so true, right? Because uh, I have bad days often. <laughs> I, I do. I do. And I don't know my technique. Technique is not good. It's a lot of yelling and screaming. And I get a lot, you know, and I have kids and I don't like that. And I've been, I, I watch them now. And for example, when they're not listening and they're not, um, you know, doing their work or what they're supposed to or at night taking their showers or baths, uh, I scream, now, 
get upstairs now, do it now. And all of a sudden, uh, two weeks ago, my little guy starts texting his friend, the neighbor, and he did like a voice chat on Snapchat to like text because he doesn't really text. And he's like, Emma, Ryan, outside now. And he screams and I'm like, Why? don't yell at that. It's like, what's wrong with saying now? Mom, you say it all the time. And then I had to think. I'm like, I'm always screaming at them. Do it now. Now. I sound like a tyrant. But um, got to be careful with your behavior and how it passes on to the kids like that. And as I digress again, but it's true. It's true. Coach me to calm down. It, it is Coach true. Me. It is true. And that's so, it, it's so interesting because, I mean, even us as we grow up, we take on all of those things from our parents and our friends and our classmates yeah. and our teachers. And I mean, a teacher could tell you like, oh, Lindsay, you're terrible at math. And that could change the trajectory of my life in math for example, because it's like, oh, well, this teacher who I respect, this is an authority person in my life, thinks that I'm horrible in math, so I must be horrible in math. So now I'm going to start believing that, and because I believe that, that's what my result is going to be. I'm now going to be horrible at math, when that's really not true. It was just somebody else said it. and. It's just so interesting that kids really are sponges and they pick up on everything, not just things that we say, but they pick up on our feelings and our vibrations and just our, our body movements, our body language. I mean, just everything. They absorb absolutely everything. And that's that's awesome, but it's also overwhelming and frightening, right? It is. It is. It is. <laughs> Guilty. Oh. Yeah. I'll be okay. <laughs> It all work together. What else can we you do help the coach? best we can yeah. with what we have to work with? What else can you help coach people like me with? Ha ha ha. No, I, I think that's probably the number one thing that I would tell people. Great attitude, great results. Because regardless of what's happening to you, whether it's a positive or negative situation, mm-hmm. a good or bad thing, you can always find a good thing within it. It may take a little bit. Uh, but you can always find the good, the good thing, the silver lining. You can always find something. And as long as you have a good attitude about it, then that's going to make all the difference. You're not going to be sitting there dwelling in it. You're not going to yeah. be making it worse. You're, so I think that's probably the number one thing that I, I would tell people. And that came straight from Earl Nightingale, uh, The Magic Word, his essay, The Magic Word. And the magic word is attitude. Mm, interesting. <laughs> Attitude. I need some more attitude. Lindsay, remind us how we can contact you, please. Yeah, so the website is flyfearlessunlimited.com and the email is info at flyfearlessunlimited.com. Now, when you're working with you, do you have any workshops coming up? Do you have any, um, you know, any any current um, clients that you're working with that you're doing? Excuse me, some type of collaborating with them. What's been happening in your world as I take another sip of water? <laughs> yeah, so I'm currently working on the next workshop. Um, it it should be in, I'm planning for November, so next month. I just haven't finalized a date um, or anything yet, but that's, that's what I'm working on. I'm not sure whether I'll do the same topic or whether I'm going to change the topic. So that's why I've been holding off on a date. I'm waiting to see what, what information I should be presenting next. But next month is, is definitely the target. We're going to do another workshop, completely free, 90 minutes, um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be a good time for sure. More information to come on it. All right. And as far as, you know, the people you're helping, it's mostly women still, right? That you work with. Um, it, <laughs> it is mostly women. Uh, I do have, uh, some men reaching out. Like I said, with the, the veterans, yeah. I have been getting more men reaching out, which, I mean, I've been in male dominated spaces for the majority of my life, especially with the military background. So I, I can definitely have, have those conversations with men and, um, men have shown up to my workshops. They've shown up to my speaking engagements. So I'm, I mean, if they, if they want to work with me or potentially work with me, absolutely come schedule on my calendar. I am more than happy to have a conversation to see if it makes sense. And if you are a veteran and struggling, please get on my calendar and, um, you know, share, share your experience or, um, you know, just have somebody who can listen to your story. Has there been anyone that you've worked with that really, you know, you know, suffers from like PTSD, right? That's something you deal with a lot in your field, right? 
<coughs> is that something that you specialize in as well for those that have served? Uh, well, I'm not. I'm. I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. Um, you know, I'm not. I can't. I. I don't have those credentials. I don't claim any of those credentials. I. I am a a coach, and I'm willing to be a listening ear. And maybe some of the tools or experiences that I have gone through can help resonate with someone to come on the other side. So, if somebody needs more direct medical care, I would not be the professional professional for that. But if somebody just wants to have a conversation and have somebody to listen, um, you know, maybe they're not getting, you know, the, the information that they need or the information that they want, or maybe they're not getting the connection that they're looking for. And I'm more than willing to have that conversation and uh, sit there and allow them to have that time and space to share their experience, share their story. Because sometimes you just need somebody to listen to. Yeah, I understand. You need that ear. It's like that cheerleader that comes along with you because some people might say, well, what's the difference with a coach than going to a mental health counselor? Would you mind sharing that? Yeah, so they're going to have um, more specific tools and resources as far as in the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. They're going to have different training, different credentials that go along with that. Um, you know, uh, some of them can prescribe medications or provide different resources or referrals or things of that nature um, where I'm... I'm just going to kind of guide you with with the experiences and maybe open up your brain to allow you to look at it a different way and maybe help you so come to a conclusion <laughs> on your own that will help you on your journey. Um, so really kind of digging within yourself and helping you come through to the other side. Uh, but let everyone know there is help. There is someone out there that can work with you. And it's different for everyone, I know. But do you have any certain packages of how long someone should be working with you? You know, is it six months, three months? What do you normally recommend? That is really an individual thing. Some people are are good after three months. I mean, okay. usually around three months is, is pretty a good starting point. But some people want longer in-depth um, analysis. They just want that point person. And maybe we're only meeting once a month at that point. Um, but they, you know, want to keep an ongoing touch point or relationship. Um, but usually a, um, a three month package kind of gives us a good starting point to um, either get you on the other side or, um, you know, boost up your yeah. confidence, get your resilience muscle working and, you know, move on to the next step. And do you get coached? How did, you know, what is your insight to coaches need coaching? I absolutely well. think coaches need coaches and mentors. I do have coaches and mentors. Absolutely. I mean, if you are working with a coach or a mentor who does not have their own coaches and mentors, yeah. I think that's a problem uh, because we should constantly be getting better. We should be constantly growing, not only for ourselves, but for our clients. And if we're not being the best versions um, for ourselves, then we're not yeah. being our be best versions for our clients either. All right. Well, Lindsay, we're just about out of time. We have two minutes left on the clock. How did you want to leave off with everyone today about why they should reach out with you and get that coach and get that guidance that some of us are lacking that we want to get that we haven't done? We're procrastinating. Yeah, I mean, everybody needs a coach in their corner. Uh, just have a neutral third party so that you can get out of your own head. And if you need somebody to talk to, um, you know, somebody to ask questions, uh, to go through different experiences, if you need to build your confidence, uh, build your resilience, a lead uh, authentically, um, or any of those things, please reach out, flyfearlessunlimited.com, info at flyfearlessunlimited.com. Perfect. Thank you again for being here and enjoy your day. And um, I got to go get uh, some coffee or tea now, I think. Thank go you. Some Lindsay. Cough drops. I appreciate it. I, thank you. <laughs> I do have those in my bag. Thank you. How do we contact you. you? Oh, uh, flyfearlessunlimited.com, info at flyfearlessunlimited.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much. All right. Stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back with more. Are you struggling to make your mark in a male dominated industry? Are you ready to break free from limitations and unlock your true potential? I'm Lindsay Arico, founder of Fly Fearless Unlimited. We empower women to embrace their authenticity, build unshakable resilience, and lead with unstoppable confidence. Together, we'll break barriers and redefine success. Schedule your complimentary discovery call by going to our website, flyfearlessunlimited.com. 
Let's conquer the skies and fly fearless together. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat, aren't there? Rear facing, forward facing? I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat, or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.